Hi guys, Henny and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're going to be covering the new Sculptress Pro mode in Seabrush 2018. This is one of my favorite features in being added to Seabrush in a long time, so we're really excited about this. In in short, what is doing it doing is enabling you to locally subdivide where the brush is, like this. Wherever the brush is, you will get more resolution. This is super useful if you are doing concepting or just want to experiment with uh, some cool new designs and you just want more resolution. This is different from Dynamesh in the sense that Dynamesh will re-evaluate your model, uh, the entire model, while Seabrush will, will, will only now add details where you put details. Yeah, so this is a much faster way of concepting and yeah. reiterating on your models because you don't have to wait for the dynam the remeshing to happen, the reprojection onto your mesh. You yeah. just you know you just sculpt and drag out like kind of like you're just actually adding more clay, but much more intuitively. Yeah, exactly. There was a lot of things you just couldn't really do very well with uh, with Dynamesh, such as the snake hook brush. The snake hook brush will always <laughs> just kind of break because it would actually run out of resolution. It finally works it finally works so now we can actually do super cool things with a snake hook brush after what 15 years or so <laughs> yes <Yeah. laughs> so uh, you can see here now that we have uh, we've just been dragging out here now with a snake hook brush and um this is this is amazing so we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves right now because we get excited about this Pro. <laughs> the way you enable it is by going up here and just clicking the button yeah you can also do this under stroke and just clicking here or by the hotkey which is uh, forward slash, forward slash. Which, is, which is what I'm using. I'm just using hotkey for this. Really, really handy stuff. Because a lot of times you want to you want to do some regular sculpting mm -hmm. uh, just without without any Sculptors Pro enabled and then just with it. So hotkey is, the, is really the way to go here. Or yeah, it's, it's like when, once you start using the Sculptors Pro mode, you'll notice that you know your underlying surface will start to jitter a little bit once you start sculpting. So maybe mm -hmm. if you're doing something on a face, you don't want to actually have the surface change yeah. at all. So, you know, it's nice using the hotkey because it makes it really fast. Yeah. So there are, there are two concepts here in uh, Sculptors Pro. One is uh, tessellation, which is what happens when you're sculpting here, just with the, the regular brush. And then you have decimation, which is what happens when you hit the smooth brush. Yeah, so tessellation is essentially you're adding more subdivision, yeah. and decimation is like, you know, from the decimation master is you're subtracting detail. Yeah. Yeah, I find these terms to be confusing. Yeah. Because decimation, tessellation, and then you have tessimation as well. Yeah. I just find it to be pretty annoying. So we're just gonna be talking about adding points and removing also points. Also because <laughs> within ZBrush, they like within the Sculptures Pro um settings, they're referring to it as subdivide and undivide. Yeah. So they're calling it tessellation and decimation, but they're also calling it subdivide and undivide. So there's no adding detail, removing detail. Yeah pretty straightforward. They're not so good with the whole terminology, making it <laughs> nice and clear. This should just be more points, less points. Yeah, yeah. So what you can see here, though, is that the, the amount of details are dependent on the brush size. So if our brush size is now small here, uh, you get a lot more, a lot of details. If it's big, you don't get a lot of details, which is really handy because now you can just you can just add details where you want to. So you want to add a little eye to this guy here. You can just start sculpting here, mm -hmm. and you want more just details here, make this brush smaller, and then you can just start adding some purple eyelids. This is so them. nice because in the past, maybe maybe you've had to mask off parts of your object and mm. then only subdivide the eyes, yeah. or you know, you re-dynamesh everything and it takes a while because it's high res. This really yeah. allows you to really quickly just concept on stuff. Yeah. It's amazing. So let us be clear on one thing here though, that this here is not for production use. We made a video some weeks ago talking about how you can split up your model in Seabrush to get additional details. And mm. let's say you want you want to split off the head to do this. Somebody asked us, why don't you just use Sculptor's Pro Mode? Perfectly valid question. Well, the reason is because this destroys your topology. <laughs> and UVs. <laughs> and UVs and everything. Yeah, this, this, this doesn't support UVs. So if you are in any kind of production, you cannot use this. Unless well, I mean, you do concepting. Concept yeah, yeah. yeah, if you're in concepting, but the moment, the moment, moment your model is pipelined, yeah. you cannot use this. Uh, but this is a fantastic tool just for sculpting. So uh, like you see here, like I said, the, hi the higher the brush size, or the smaller brush size, the, the higher the poly count, and vice versa. So this also works if you want to reduce points, which you do by holding on the shift key. So now you can see that we're reducing it. You can also see that by holding the shift key, the color turns this like yellow 
yellow orange color and uh, by default it's set to this purple color here so you know that when uh, you hold down the shift key and it turns uh, turns orange you're reducing the points here so with the bigger the brush size the more you're going to reduce it this is just super cool yeah and these are these are things you can adjust let's say you can't make your brush big enough or whatever you can always fiddle around with the subdivide undivide yeah. size and ratio yeah we'll you. get we'll get to that in a bit now so what we're um, uh, what you can do here now you can do you can do some pretty cool stuff you can like reduce you can like cut stuff off <laughs> like this this here is super powerful yeah because this here used to be a real pain in us to do like with dynamesh you have to like you have to put an object in the middle here and you have to like dynamesh it and cut it off and now you can just do this and just just sit. erase it you just erase this little feet it's really nice actually <laughs> it's it's a really cool way of quickly just cutting stuff yeah. off your object we did experiment with it and it doesn't seem like you can actually cut holes through your model with no. it um because it needs to something if want, needs if to, you want to do this yeah something needs to be different with your al with the algorithm in order for it to allow this but yeah. um yeah maybe cut a hole traditionally with like some trim brushes and yeah. clip rectangle brush or Absolutely. something. This is not a replacement for Dynamics. No, no. Or, or any of the other tools. This is not like we're only using we're only using Sculptor's Pro mode now, mode now. This is just to enhance it. Yeah. Like you can use this perfectly perfectly well with Dynamesh as well as well. So um let's talk about the settings here. So adaptive size here means that the the details vary based on your brush size. If you disable this you can see that if a brush size is big or small, super small brush, super big brush, <laughs> same density. This is really useful. Uh, then we have uh, combined. This is uh, this is combining, dividing, and undividing. It's essentially decimating and uh, <laughs> the decimating and tessellating at the same time. So it's adding resolution while subtracting resolution. Yeah. So this sometimes your resolution here or your performance can can get a bit slow if you're sculpting with this. You can make it better by disabling the combine button here. Because then it only has to do one action. Yeah. Now, now it doesn't have to worry about doing two actions at once. Yeah. So uh, the ZBrush docs are saying that, uh, that they've experienced um, uh, uh, they've experienced performance issues between like a few hundred thousand and a few million polys. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you should never really go above like like this shouldn't be. You shouldn't be sculpting 10 million polys with this. This here would be probably not. <laughs> you're like you're sculpting this level here, and then you're just subdivided normally. This is yeah. not a replacement for regular subdivision. When I've had students, they, they've often had issues with uh, the concept of subdivision versus just dynameshing something. And the the way you do this, you work until your base is fine. Once this little dude here is good, perfectly fine right now. <laughs> we um we're just gonna subdivide him normally. You could you could see your meshing subdivided. This is not a replacement for subdivisions at all. It is important to note though that um, while you're in Sculptor's Pro mode, you can't work with subdivisions. No. So well, you I mean you can subdivide now, but then you can't work on your mesh. No. So absolutely. it has to be a mesh with no subdivision levels on absolutely. it. So the settings here are essentially a higher number means lower poly count. So if we take this up here now, and we start sculpting. You can see that now we now it's it's reducing the poly count here, and if we increase it even more, you can see that now it's just destroying the mesh <laughs> here. Uh, I would be careful about putting this too low because this is just going to create like a black hole of density, and it's just going to destroy the universe and yeah. your mesh. Yeah, ZBrush might crash. Yeah, ZBrush <laughs> might crash. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens to me a few times when I play with this and it goes way too low, and it just goes boom, <laughs> and ZBrush is gone. The same with the other one here as well. If you uh, just by default, you can see what happens now uh, by holding the shift key. And let's increase the number here, and you can now see that this is now the number here is now um, it's being reduced instead. Yeah. So when you're doing this with the adaptive size and combined, sort of like it tries to preserve your sculpted detail, but it also tries to remove detail in smoother areas. Yes. So. Um, if you want to, if you if you don't want to work on adaptive on, then uh, this is the number it's going to be based on. So let's set this here back to default. So all these settings here are also global by default. You can disable this or make it brush specific if you go under brush. And then we have a sculptor's pro mode, and here you use use global, and here you can change this based on the brush. So this is really useful if you, for some reason, want to have brush specific 
settings for Sculptor's Pro mode. Mm -hmm. I haven't really found a use for that yet. So because you can just turn off Sculptor's Pro mode. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, <laughs> but maybe if you don't want to turn it on and off constantly, you could set up something there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because yeah, you could. I just hit the key. Yeah, it <laughs> seems much easier just to use the hotkey. Yeah. So it, let's say you have enough resolution here. Let's say you enable Sculptor's Pro mode again, and you and you've sculpted enough around your eyes, and you have enough resolution here now. I mean, I probably wouldn't use Sculptor's Pro much further, I would just disable it and mm -hmm. just sculpt normally. Because there isn't any reason to keep adding resolution to everything just because no. you just just because you can. Just because you can. Like, just feel free to just to just disable. Yeah. Disable the mode here. So um to just sum up this here, uh all pretty much all brushes will use will work with Sculptor's Pro. What's not gonna work is um insert mesh brushes. Uh, vector brushes or vector displacement brushes, or um, any kind of any kind of fancy brush which adds points to mm -hmm. the model like this, like for instance the morph brush obviously isn't going to work because you're changing the poly count here. It has to be a brush that modifies the existing surf surface. Yes, exactly. Except for the move brush, which <laughs> doesn't work. So it's like a way to. I mean, I think I think it makes sense because then you have technically a move brush and a snake hook brush, yeah. um, and you can always lower the intensity of the snake hook brush to get a moving tessellating piece of geometry. Yeah, and you can also, if you want, if you, let's say you're doing this and you want to move the move brush and you want to you want to add points to it, just yeah. just smooth it, and you get that. But um, the snake hook brush. Best thing ever now. Like it's super it's cool. Actually it's, useful. It's actually useful. That that's been one of the things I've, I've before I've just been using to like push and pull a little bit here. Yeah. But now you can actually use it for some crazy stuff here. You can just see how quickly we can just change this up here. Uh to make this super nice little horn it's like a Pokemon thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that was what I was going for. <laughs> but you're gonna see how quickly you can just define you can just add resolution to stuff now. If you want to add little give them little arms. And you wanna, you can just really quickly do this now. Mm -hmm. This will, this here is is reducing my use of something like C spheres a lot, just because you can just super quickly just add this. Yeah. If you want more resolution than this now? You know, you just make your brush size smaller, and you can just, you can just start refining this. It's super intuitive to work with. Mm. Very quick as well. Really good job to the guys over at Pixelogic because this is a this is a really fantastic tool here. Mm. So with all this said, we really hope that this here has been uh, been useful for you and that you learned something about Sculptris Pro. For sure. And you want to see more content like this in the future? Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.